with that, Madam Speaker, Your Honor, I move for the recognition of the Honorable Belaro. So move, Madam Speaker, Your Honor. The Honorable Gentleman is recognized. Good afternoon, Madam Speaker. May, uh, firstly, this representation would like to thank the, the veteran parliamentarian, the legend Raul Daza, for seeing the light in the order of precedence with respect to this interpolation. At this juncture, Madam Speaker, may I re uh, inquire whether the representative from the party list Magdalo, my comrade in the party list Black, Gary Alihano, if he is willing to concede to some interpolating queries. Yes, Certain, certainly, I... Madam Speaker. It's my honor. Proceed. May I proceed, yes. Madam Speaker? Yes, please proceed. Madam Speaker, this representation also would like primordially to acknowledge the patriotic speech just delivered by the representative from the party list Magdalo for paying tribute to the unsung heroes of wars done in, and happened in this country. Perhaps it may be not remiss to cite the First World War, the Second World War, and his speech was an eye-opening venue for us to realize the sacrifices of these veterans. Madam Speaker, the question is quite haywire, but this representation is, quite, is just intrigued by the fact that, as uh, cited in the speech of the Honorable Alihano, that there, is, there seems to be a dearth of funds earmarked for the veterans of our country despite their contributions to our nation building. And one circumstance which strike, strikes the mind of this representation is with respect to the Veterans Bank. The Veterans Bank, as for all you know, ladies and gentlemen, has a lot of funds and is endowed with a lot of resources. And, and so with this background there, ladies and gentlemen, Madam Speaker, the first question is with this which is but fitting to ask the Honorable Gentleman from Magdalo is that whether has any of these funds, these vast funds from Veterans Bank, actually trickled down for the benefit of our veterans in the Philippines? Uh, thank you, Honorable uh, Bilano. Uh, actually, uh, that issue was taken in the last Congress in the Committee of Veterans Affairs and Welfare uh, because uh, we know for a fact that there are uh, billions of pesos that are unpaid to our veterans and considering the fact they are now old and they need medical attention. In that discussion, uh, Madam Speaker, uh, Honorable Bilar, it was found out that uh, the Veterans Bank has uh, remitted to the board, board of Trustees of World War II certain amount, I think 20% of uh, their income for the purposes of providing benefits to our World War II veterans. And in the process, the board provided uh, medical attention through medical mission and other uh, medical services to our uh, veterans of World War II. However, it was also discussed that the amount given to the veterans is not that huge compared to the amount remitted by the bank. So there was an argument that the government has no authority over the Veterans Bank considering that it has its own charter. So the committee has requested the Solicitor General of uh, our government to request for legal opinion whether uh, the Congress or the government has authority over the funds of uh, the Veterans Banks and the Board of Process of World War II. And uh, as of now, uh, Madam Speaker, we still have to see the result of that uh, discussion. Madam Speaker, it is the understanding of this representation that the Veterans Bank is one of the country's GOCC, or government owned and controlled corporation, and thus it is governed by its own charter. But considering the fact that it is continually using the name Veterans Bank, I think uh, it is respect, most respectfully manifest of its representation, it better live up to its name. Now, the question 
the question of this representation addressed to the honorable gentleman from Magdalo Partilis is that what recommendations by way of legislation can you make with respect to these continuous and rather irregular inflow of funds towards veteran affairs by this bank purporting that it is working for the welfare of the veterans when in fact it is only irregularly and in fact unpredictably flowing its funds for the welfare of the veterans. What can you recommend by way of legislation with respect to this bank, sir? I guess, uh, Madam Speaker, my esteemed colleagues, we have to continue the discussion on the issue of uh, the funds of the veterans' banks so that we can have a clear picture as to whether uh, these funds will be allocated to our veterans or be provided for the medical benefits of our veterans. Actually, a resolution investigating the funds was filed in the last Congress, and I believe this time around the 17th Congress, we have to file another resolution in order to look at the issues deeply. Because I believe that the funds came from uh, the government, and it has uh, implication on public interest. And uh, I believe that uh, Congress has the power and authority to look into the matter and uh, propose a uh, measure in order to correct whatever uh, uh, problems that was encountered uh, in the, in the uh, management of veterans' time. Madam Speaker, by way of final note, this is a presentation I would like to thank the Honorable gentleman from Magdalo Partidist for delivering such a patriotic speech. And it is the fervent hope of this representation that the war veterans will not be buried in the memory of our people and much less in the memory of the government, much less by not remembering them for the funds that truly should, should flow for their welfare and for the benefits that they rightfully deserve through the years. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Maraming salamat pa. Majority Leader, 